it is the light skin simmer ajax here and we are doing a dcs to star citizen transition now what that means is anybody who's accustomed to playing dcs and is interested in star citizen i'm going to be going over the actual transition and you're going to be walking with me live as i go through this i've only had star citizen for a uh, few days now just long enough to do some binding settings and get used to some of the gameplay you know stylings and all of that stuff and so as you can see here we are presented with a glorious beautiful picture of the trees and the leaves and all of this stuff and blah 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 and that's only one faucet and one planet and one city of the universe that is star citizen or as they call it the verse so we will regale you with some verses from just kidding um so a little bit of background i've uh, been playing simulators and you know uh flying sims for quite some time like at least 15 years i do have some actual aviation experience so i can speak a little bit to that i am technical in my background in nature and all of this stuff and i just want to do a review because i haven't seen anything of anybody talking about the transition from playing dcs to star citizen and this completely different so before I get into the details and specifics about it, one thing I want to talk about is kind of the system setup and how the system works on your computer, which is completely different from DCS. Star Citizen, um, again, it's just it, it's it's a whole different just theme altogether from DCS. So first things first, I want to talk about some of the requirements. So the requirements for system processing is similar to what you would need for DCS however what uh, the way the system uses the resources is completely different so starting off uh, I'm gonna tell you what my rig is as it is now I've ran DCS initially my initial rig was an i5 with a GTX 1660 and I was able to run DCS fine I was running it off of 16 gigs of RAM DCS worked fine with me I could get on servers I could play I could fly the graphics weren't cranked all the way up but they were good enough for me they look you know still look decent and all that stuff uh, I was able to play DCS everything was good everything was fine I uh, upgraded my um, graphics card to a 3060 now before everybody jumps in and start talking about oh man you upgraded from trash to more trash look man this is for players and this whole channel is for players specifically who are have responsibilities you know i'm a dad i'm a husband and got a full-time job and going to school so you know i gotta i gotta you know cut the corners you know pinch the downs wherever i can it took me a long time just to even upgrade to the 3060 i don't know it's not the greatest car but it was better than what i had so leave me alone i'm going with it uh anyway back to the rig setup uh i used to be able to play dcs fine with that everything was good i upgraded to 3060 and i also upgraded to 64 gigs of ram same processor and all that stuff but i moved my uh everything on to an ssd uh for star citizen i actually put the game itself on a m.2 and that m.2 is specifically for star citizen just so i can see how it runs in fact all of my games are segregated i have my open beta dcs on one uh ssd and i have my stable on a completely different ssd and all the resources required on those ssd remotely one just so that there's you know space headroom for whatever upgrades may come down a pack and two just in case one gets corrupted all of them don't get corrupted if you will so you know give them space to stretch out and all that stuff but anyway back to how the setup is um dcs is very gpu and ram heavy star citizen is extremely cpu heavy as in when i load up star citizen and start actually playing it uses all 100 percent of my cpu now again i do have an i5 so it may be different with i9s i7s whatever or whatever the amd variants are of that uh, for my GPU, I was expecting it to be utilizing, you know, 80% of my GPU because in DCS it uses 100% of the GPU almost 100% of the time. And RAM, same thing. Uh, DCS by nature uses up half of your RAM capacity. So if you have 16 gigs, it's going to use up 8. If you have 32 gigs, it's going to use up 16, so on and so forth. Uh, at least that's what I've noticed with my rig. DCS kind of cuts itself off at the halfway mark of whatever your ram capacity is 
in Star Citizen, it's not like that. My GPU max usage that I've seen is about 40% in game, maybe 50%. And um, like I said, it really didn't even struggle. The RAM load is 12, 13 gigs at max is what I've seen for the RAM. So uh, that's just some of the main differences when you transition from DCS to Star Citizen. Something to be just mindful of. Now, some of the other differences is the actual play of the game the mechanics obviously completely different star citizen is primarily a fps if you will first person shooter so that was kind of one of the things that drew me to star citizen is that in dcs when you get out of your aircraft whether you're on the ground or whether you eject from it that's it you can't hop in another aircraft even if you uh hit the uh, i think it's control j to uh enter into another aircraft or uh take control of an aircraft that you're looking at you can't do that, especially if it's AI controlled or if you don't have that module purchase. However, in Star Citizen, you start off with a starter pack and obviously you got to pay $45 for the starter pack. It's not like DCS where you can download it for free and get into it. You do actually have to put something up front. They do have these fly, free fly weeks or whatnot that you can participate in, which allows you to actually download it and fly without having to pay anything but uh here you know you do this pledge system so cheapest one is 45 dollars you got two types of craft that you can choose from but what that gets you is the game the module itself and you get uh you know some extra start off credits to uh join the game if you use the um you know code below you can get an extra 5,000 in universe credits now one thing I like about Star Citizen 2 is once you use that starter pack you don't need to do like DCS and every time a new module comes out you gotta flush out money or you gotta save up for it no you just use in-game credits and you buy the next ship that you want and it's so wide it's so just it's so much in Star Citizen that I can't even cover it in one video so we're just gonna talk about the actual transitional part and some of the things you need to do to get set up um, moving on um, star citizen when you come in you'll be viewed to this page or whatnot right so you have this page and you have persistent universe on the left star marine and area commander first thing you want to do is the persistent universe so when you select the persistent universe um, that is star citizen universe itself so you'll click in here it'll bring you to this screen and in this screen you will see uh this is where you would set your primary residence uh and you do your character customization so one of the first things it'll do since i've already done mine is your character customization you come here just click on that and you can choose to be a ball-headed man woman or you can choose to be a ball-headed man man and whichever one you choose to do you start from there you can see this is pretty much a template so let's say we want to be a ball-headed woman man uh, this is the base that you get and of course as you can tell it's in a feminine feature I'm not getting into the whole you know wokeism thing about oh yeah genderism blah 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 we're talking about sex here the biology there's only two biologies uh, male and female that's just how your genetics work that's why when you see this one is shorter than the masculine or the male variant just because that's how genetics works anyway ain't getting into that cuz we ain't doing politics whatever anyway so once you select your sex I know I got gender up here that's improper once you select your sex you'll select your head type you can cycle through all these different head types whatever kind that you want once you find the one that you like you start the blending phase so now you can choose whatever skin tone you want if this skin tone doesn't represent you and you want to be a little bit lighter and more pale you can click apply skin from this model here or you can select the next model next model maybe you want to be this skin tone you click that and you see how it applies after you select the whole head that's pretty much the features for the whole body or the skin tone for the whole body in general setup you can go down to brow and now you can blend sp these specific features based off of this model so this is the template and this is your actual character that you want to blend features from so let's say you don't like the way these characters brows are and you want to select this character's brow you take this line this bar and you just drag it. you can see how it becomes more pronounced or drag it down to make it less pronounced same thing with the eyes do the same thing you can adjust the height of it, the shape whatever let's say you don't like those eyes you can go to this person and 
adjust your eyes accordingly you can see how those adjust you can make them look like you or make them look like whoever you want you can make it look like I don't know whatever you want it to look like you can see how all these different features get adjusted you can do your hair cycle through the different hair types you can change the color of it here you can do all of this stuff so once you figure out the character that you want you go down to the review get a full view of them and once you're satisfied with that character you go down and click accept now I've already created my character so I'm just gonna hit go ahead and cancel but you can come back here just like I did and change the way your character model looks if you want to at any given point in time once you do that you'll come back here and it'll give you the option to select from your primary residence there are four primary residents that you can be a part of i've chosen area 18 and i'll tell you why after i go over the ones that you can choose from so a little bit of background in the universe you are part of the stanton system the stanton system is really uh incorporated if you will it's kind of like an enterprise systems where the planets are owned by certain companies there's a few companies in the universe and i won't get into too much detail with them just yet however just a little bit of background you have one place that you can start is lauraville it's kind of a desert place and it's more industrial that's kind of where you go to if you want to get big ships and things of that nature so you can start there uh, it's a little further out from the center of the universe. Uh, you can start at New Babbage, which is, I believe, the most furthest body or planetary body or city on a planetary body from the central universe, which is where a lot of things happen. But it is a technical, uh, you know, it's more tech savvy. It's like the tech headquarters of the system. It's a cold environment there, but it has a nice scenic uh, view to it. Orison is a nor another one. It's a floaty city that is above a gas giant and it has this kind of this serene nice feeling to it Again, it's kind of further out from the center and then you have area 18 which is city like and you know It's kind of like it's at the center of the actual universe itself. And so the reason why I choose area 18 is because as a new player to Star Citizen like the universe is so vast and large that you know it takes a while to travel to places so area 18 and uh the planet that it's on is more closer to the center of the system so it doesn't take as long to travel to places whereas if you went to uh some of the outer uh planets like uh new babbage or whatnot it's going to take you a while to get to certain places just because it's so far out there uh, the benefit is that the way it's set up is as soon as you spawn and you'll see this later on every thing that you need is kind of right there so it's easy to get to uh at first it's a lot to take in and try to figure out and navigate your way around so i recommend taking time getting familiarized with how things works to which we'll get into there later but i just chose that one because it's right there in the middle of everything and it's close and you know if you got family if you full-time employee if you go to school or all of the above you know i'm our prior time I'm not able to spend a lot of time on here so that just helps me with my time aspect of it so anyway once you select the residence that you want to be a part of you always go down and you can choose to be part of a USA server or best server now in a different video I'm gonna talk about some tips and tricks and cheats quote unquote maybe not that you can use by jumping forth back and forth between these servers but that'll be later on once you select your home universe it'll give you some information about it and then you go ahead and enter the star citizen universe and congratulations you are now a citizen of the star uh it's kind of like that notion of uh what they say if uh shoe for the moon and if you miss you'll be among the stars well i guess this is a literal incarnation of that we are going to be among the stars baby uh, now these planetary bodies do actually have moons that you can travel to and do stuff and things on uh, You can see up there. There's a little bit of information about the system itself So we're gonna do some loading. It's probably gonna take a little bit I'm gonna skip past this until we get to the point where we load in and due to the power and magic of editing Here we are in our bed and now this is where you start every single time you begin star citizen So we're here and this is where, again, like I said, you begin every time you log out and log back in. Unless you have a ship or something that has a bed in there, then you can 
wake up in that ship but this is where you're going to start off as a beginning player at the bottom you can see all of these different things that pop up uh, these are pretty much hints and all of that and uh, of course on the left side you have the chat box which I haven't figured out how to turn off yet but we're getting it so some things I didn't go over yet because I want to wait till we got into gameplay. So one first thing, uh, what I'm wearing right now is not what you're gonna be wearing when you first start off. Uh, I have armor on and a different undersuit. When you first start, you're gonna have a straight black undersuit, and that's gonna be it. You're not gonna have nothing else. Uh, you're gonna have an undersuit and a helmet. We'll go with it, over that in a little bit. Uh, controls for this is if you're used to using a keyboard playing online games, it's a standard W A S D to move forward, left, right, backwards, all that stuff. Uh, uh, F in this mode is your interaction key and the Y key is how you get up out of seats or get out of chairs things of that nature so before we go into that we want to hit the escape key to pull up your options and kind of like DCS that's what you would do in DCS uh, you go to your options to make adjustments now DCS and Star Citizen look completely different when it comes to key binding, system settings, all of this stuff. Now here it may look, you know, relatively straightforward for the most part it is. But you have all these different options across the top. However, it's slightly different. Before we go any further though, I want to talk about some of the game settings that you will want to adjust. Or at least for me, I wanted to adjust based off of my preference. I turned off cinematic camera just because it did a bunch of unnecessary stuff that I didn't like. Vibration, that's for if you have a controller like an actual uh, PS4 or a uh, PlayStation or a Xbox controller. Uh, sprint movement, left that alone. Show hints, make sure that that's cut on. When I started, this was not cut on, so I wasn't getting the hints at the bottom, which are very useful for very beginners. Uh, cockpit audio settings, you can do that uh, as you want. Crouch toggle, uh, you can set that as you want. Again, this is primarily a first person shooter, and then a aircraft simulator or a spacecraft simulator second. Uh, aim down sights toggle, all that good stuff. Uh, I think those are the big things that I did on this particular tab. Graphic setting, that's the one that you really want to go to. Uh, you want to, you can adjust these however you want. This is the native resolution of my screen. Windows mode is the mo one that I would want to recommend. If you are a multi-screen user like I am, which most people are, you want to change it because the uh, first part is, I believe, either uh, is full screen. You want to change it to full screen to either borderless or window. Uh, the reason why I say that is because if you leave it on the full screen version, you won't be able to go outside the boundary of the screen. And if you use multiple screens like I do and you want to check different things and click on different things, you can't do it unless you use the Alt tab or Windows key tab button to cycle and select another screen. But when you do that, this whole Star Citizen screen disappears and shows your desktop. So I really don't like that. It's probably not the best because you lose complete situational awareness. So I go to either borderless or window. I do borderless just because it gives you the same view as full screen, but with obviously without the borders. Next, I did quality. I just left it as is right now. You can do high, very high, however you want to. Because I'm testing this, I leave it at medium. Um, scatter distance, put that at medium. I put everything pretty much at medium just so that because uh, I'm going to test it and see how well everything does. Now, I'm using an i5 in here right now. I actually have an i9 that I'm going to put in here after doing this video. And the next time I upload this, it should have the i9 in it. And, you know, we'll do some uh, back and forth between the differences of how Star Citizen runs with the i5 and with the i9. And I'm going to tell you the CPU uses. Speaking of which, right now my CPU uses is hovering between 88 and a and essentially 100% I have uh, I'm using a NZXT cam uh, to monitor my temperatures and my performance for my GPU and my CPU just because I was curious to see what that's like uh, especially with the load of it being at 100% all the time I was curious what type of temperatures it's running so right now I'm at 72 next you want to look at the Blur, I cut the motion blur off because again, I mean it doesn't really affect FPS I don't think, but I just didn't like the way that it looked while I'm in game trying to play. It just looks 
I don't know, just looks nasty to me. So anyway, uh, next thing is chromatic aberration. Turn that all the way down, because it's all the way on a thousand. No, just kidding, it's on a hundred. But you want to turn that all the way down. If you don't know what chromatic aberration is, that is a that is an effect that's more relevant in t uh, photography and filmography, where white light hits a lens and reflect and scatters the white light into all the different color arrays so they use that in this game normally it's used in gaming to cover up some of the edges that aren't per perfect and filmography and uh, you know all the other um, photo photography uh, they really don't like that because it messes with the quality of it but in gaming apparently it's supposed to make it seem more real life but or like you're looking at it through a lens and I just didn't like it it was just messy it was nasty also took off the film grain as well and those are the more two big things as far as graphic goes that I would adjust because it just makes it more clear and I just like clarity in my game you know I like seeing the details and stuff you know I want to see what they did and what they didn't do and then go from there so anyway audio you can adjust that however you want to controls this is different from actual key bindings themselves key bindings are here and controls are here so I'm gonna go over key bindings first and then we're gonna jump back to controls um, key bindings this is just what it looks like this is my in-flight keyboard uh, controls and you can come down here and go to on foot controls which are slightly different and once you hover over the keyboard it zooms in so you can look at everything and get a better view of stuff um, so each key control is different you can change that however you want to over here is your input type so you can do mouse and keyboard you can do your controller if you want to plug up a uh, Xbox controller or whatever variant you have of that and then if you want to adjust your whole test settings you have to go over here to advanced control and customization and for those coming from DCS this is where you want to go to for those who don't know what whole test stands for it's hands on throttles and stick alright cool so we're gonna click that one thing that I came through to adjust is flight movement and you want to bind your axes your standard axes like you would in DCS uh, something to note though in here while you're doing your binding I want to highlight these the strafing up down left and right if you don't know what that is strafing left and right is when you're moving sideways so like a helicopter uh, in this game the spacecraft fly more like a helicopter a very stable helicopter think of like a ka-50 if you will flies very stable and it'll hover in place you can pitch it down and it'll just sit there it won't go forward it won't go back you can pitch it up in the same scenario and it'll just sit in place so that's kind of how the craft in here fly um, but the strafe up and down is just what it implies that's when you're moving vertically up and vertically down you cannot put a, an inverse on there even though there's an inverse option for it it doesn't work for reasons I don't know strafe left and right I'll put that on the axis as well to literally sidestep left and right uh, I use my actual stick itself for the roll and the pitch up and down and for the rudder itself or the yaw effect and something you want to be mindful of as well um, speed limiter you want to increase that because in these vehicles you can set the max speed or the minimum speed limit not necessarily the top speed of the aircraft or the spacecraft but just how fast the vehicle moves in response to your throttle input so play around with that in game uh, you can set that I haven't set the bound to speed uh, space break because you just reverse throttle and it does it for you the throttle command is in the center and so when I push forward it actually puts it in a reverse um, action if you will and when I pull the throttle toward me instead of throttling back like in DCS it actually um, accelerates the craft forward so something to be mindful of I try to put an inverse on that but when you go to controls and you go to inversion settings and you go to flight and you go to flight movements there is no inversion setting for that but I'm under mouse so I need to scroll over and you can kinda see how the options change so I'm gonna go to inversion settings again for flight and for my flight stick you see flight movement and you got it for pitch y'all roll strafe up and down which for some reason doesn't work I put it on yes I put it on no and it still doesn't do anything so whatever forward and back for some reason I can't get forward and back to buy on the axes it only works on button presses so I haven't even bothered with that just yet 
Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you don't have any inverse axes for the throttle itself. So uh, that's one thing that you're going to have to get used to. Now, if you fly helos a lot, actually, I don't know. That probably won't even make sense as well. It just depends on how you have your binding set in DCS. But anyway, that's something to be mindful of also your point of view if you use your point of view hat it doesn't work in uh first person view unless you just bind it to that but when you get into the spacecraft um your hat is already bound to something else so you may want to change that uh, but when you get into the craft you can use your head tracking um and when you go to comms voip and head tracking you can come in here and these are the different types of trackers you can use i use track ir but you can disable that, you can use Facewear, or you can use Toby. Uh, Calibrated, you can do um, all of these different things, however you want to uh, make them work. I do auto calibration, and that just essentially uh, calibrates it to my track IR um, stuff itself, or software itself. So once you get all that set and done, you can come back out and you can return to the game. So now here we are, we're in the bed. To get out of bed or get up out of any seat or anywhere, because you, you can sit down in this game, you simply press the Y key. And you'll notice that your character gets up out of bed. And from this point, primarily your mouse is what you use to look around, left, right, up, down, however you want to do that. To move around, you stress left and right with the uh, WSD keys. And to interact, you press and hold the F key and you can see how the view changes once I press the F key. Now I released it and it's gone back to a normal view. So let's say we want to interact with something in our apartment. Uh, we'll go here to this door. I have it set in my settings to where it highlights things that you can interact with. So you can see how the door highlighted itself green. Press the F key and you see we have the option to close it. Hmm, the door is already closed, but okay, we'll do that. Hey, look at that, it closed itself even though it's already closed. All right, so we click it, open it, it opens up. We can go in, this is our shower. We can interact with a lot of things in here. All this stuff down here you can interact with. Press and hold F, hit open. See, you can crouch, take a look in there. Look, it's TP from a bunghole. Put in the comments if you know where that's from. Only uh, 90s, 80s babies will know that. So yeah, that's how you do that. You can move around uh, and look and interact with certain things. Now, you saw before that the green highlight for interaction was kind of more of a cayenne color than it was a green. When it turns solid green like this, that means it is out of range for you to interact with. But as you get closer, it'll turn to cayenne, and that means you're in range to interact with it. So now we can power this unit on. It doesn't really do anything or show anything, but it's just cool that you can interact with it. Um, pull this desk out, and we'll hit this mode, and apparently it's open. So now we can open, we can close it. Sometimes it's a little finicky. Again, this game is in its uh, beta stage, kind of like DCS and a lot of its modules. But uh, yeah, so that's how you do that. And one thing to note, once you get ready to leave your apartment, that is it. You can't come back in here anymore. And I'll show you what I mean. Click open and the door is open. Now if we turn around, the door is going to shut itself. And now it is closed. We can no longer get back in there. Doesn't matter how much I try to interact with it, it won't let me. Uh, let me take my helmet off. There we go. You can see in my shadow, my helmet just came off. I have a hotkey for that. Recommend setting a hotkey to put your helmet on and off, but we'll cover that momentarily. I recommend getting used to moving around and just kind of how the mechanics feel. And you can kind of see my screen is a little janky, if you will. Janky is not the word, but it's it's. The frames aren't the smoothest, if you will, and it's not because of the GPU, it's because of the CPU. Um, every time I move my CPU uh, is between 90 and 100 uh, on this load, if you will. So that's just something to know, and when I put that uh, i9 in here, I want to see what the difference in frame rates are and just what that looks like, because again, the frame rates aren't really controlled per se by the GPU but it's more by your CPU because again this game is CPU heavy 
I think I'm also going to make this video into a two-parter so because uh, we've already gone 20 minutes so far so stay tuned for the two-part uh, we're going to hit this ground floor and I'm going to show you what area 18 looks like once you get to the main plaza before you know we go and do anything so uh, the door should automatically open for some reason it didn't so I'm just going to open the door this arrow tells you where you're at currently uh hmm. Okay, I guess it didn't take me to the ground floor. Let's try that again. Ground floor? Oh, wait, no. Just kidding. I was on the ground floor. Uh, anyway, so you come out. Walk this way. I don't know. People are standing in the corners for reasons. I'm not sure. Now they're all looking at me. Okay. Whatever. Uh, so, yeah, you can actually sprint in this game. And this is the main plaza. First thing you'll see, at, at least on area 18, is the ammo and... Uh, armament store there is a just regular clothing store cassava and then over here uh, this place is kind of zoned out we are in zone one right now so zone two will take you over to the zone two side of everything going to the art cart plaza is where you go to to get to the hangars and other areas but before we go there uh, we're going to go to the guns and ammo store but to see what's in here stay tuned for part two and we'll see how we outfit ourselves and how we do our inventory so thank you all again for looking and uh take a look at this video this is your light skin simmer ajax 87 and we will wait to see you in the next one all right i'm out people